Hi, I'm Jill Rep from June Taylor. Today we are gonna make this fun mix and match 12 block quilt. I love this quilt design because you get four each of three different blocks and you can mix them and match them and turn them to get completely different looks. So one quilt package gives you many options. You can also use them to make table runners. So say instead of making a big quilt, you might wanna make four table runners. You can do that as well. This is quilt as you go, so the pattern is printed right on the batting. You don't need to buy a pattern, it's already there for you. And we're gonna quilt as you go, so we're gonna sew by number and complete the entire quilt in one step. I can't wait to show you how this works, so let's get started. When you open the kit, you're gonna get four pieces of printed batting, and each piece of batting has a different block on it. So there'll be 12 blocks, for each of three different styles. And you're gonna get instruction sheets as well, but we're gonna show you pretty much everything in the video today. Once our blocks are all quilted, they have to be joined. An easy way to do that is by using our sash and a dash. And Fat Quarter Shop has great packs available for you in all these colors. There's black, red, white, tan, gray, and navy blue. If you've never worked with this before, this is basically a two-sided casing. And what it allows you to do is get your blocks quilted, then simply nest them into this casing and do a straight stitch to join the blocks. And when we designed this quilt pattern, we designed it with sash and a dash in mind so that it fits perfectly around each quilt block. And let's face it, it makes for beautiful joining. Our first step is to cut each of the 12 blocks out and leave about a half inch around the outside edge of each block. Smooth it out like this, and we're gonna lay it over our block backing fabric. Now, each of the backing fabric is the same size, and we specify that in the instructions, as well as, obviously, all the pieces that we're gonna be using in here. So to start out, what we wanna do is attach our batting to our backing fabric. And to do that, we're gonna use our quilt basting spray. This is a wonderful formula that is odorless and will not gum your needle. We're always going to spray onto the batting side and then smooth over onto the backing. So you always have wrong sides together. So your pretty sides are facing out. The next thing that we're going to do is continue to work on all of the pieces that we need for each block. And what we wanna do is always to starch these pieces so they get nice and stiff. And I would go ahead and starch them before you cut, starch them even after you cut. And to do that, we're gonna use our Quilter Starch Savvy. This is an odorless, colorless, it's a man-made starch. With each application, your fabrics are gonna get a little stiffer. And we like that because we're gonna be finger pressing when we do our quilt as you go process. So give the starch a little bit of time to soak in and then go ahead and press. And we've got the rest of our fabrics cut and starched and ready to go. So now our block is attached to the backing and we're gonna find piece number one, which is the white with the red and blue stars. And we're gonna position that in the number one spot. To secure it in place, I like to use our fabric glue pen or glue stick it goes on purple, but it dries clear. So don't worry about that if it shows through because it's gonna dry clear. And then you just position fabric number one in place. So it's gonna stay there and you don't need to pin it. Fabric number two goes right sides together with one, raw edges even, on the placement line. So on the line between one and two, you're gonna line up the two fabrics. The line is a placement line, not a sewing line. And then our next step is we're gonna sew in a quarter of an inch all the way from the edge. And I've got that done here. You can see our stitching line right here. Now I'm gonna flip that up and it should land right on the next placement line, sewing in a quarter of an inch. Now what we wanna do is finger press that open and that's easy to do because we've starched our fabrics or even better yet, to use our magic seam wand. This is a wood wand that has all kinds of angles to it and it really works well for getting flat seam allowances. You can use it like this, you can use it like this, or you can put it up against a hot iron, heat it up, and then really get a good crisp seam. 
Next, we're gonna add our piece number three, which is the dot. And again, that goes right sides together on the placement line. And we're gonna sew in a quarter of an inch. And that is completed in this step right here. We're gonna flip that down. And again, we're gonna finger press. This is a very forgiving process. So if we're not exactly straight, it's okay. We are gonna just continue to use those placement lines and quarter inch seam allowances, and it's all gonna work out perfectly. Next, we're gonna add four and five, and four is the blue that goes against here. We'll sew and flip open, and then five is our dot, and that's gonna go here, and we're gonna sew both of those in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I got that done here. So you can see our quilt block is coming together nicely. Our next set of blocks were our two squares that we have you cut, and then you're just simply cutting those squares in half diagonally. And those go into six, seven, eight, and nine. So again, right sides together and raw edges even. And we're just gonna sew in that quarter inch seam allowance. And I've got that done for the next step. It's really coming together now. And there is a strategy in placing these darker colors on one side. And when we show you the finished quilt again, you're gonna see they're gonna marry up with darker fabrics from another block and it's going to create a, an even prettier design than we could have imagined. So the last step is adding 10, 11, 12, and 13 and those are all larger triangles that we've started out by cutting into squares and then cutting in half. Once that's done your block is going to look like this. So it's completely done and ready to go. Now what we're going to do is top stitch all around here just to simply hold all of our fabrics in place. And I've got that done here. There we go, there's our block. Our block is complete. And now what we wanna do is join this block to our next block. So all three designs of the blocks are a little bit different, but to join them, we are gonna use our sash in a dash. And for that, we're going to use the white sash in a dash and you just want to cut a piece that's going to fit a little bit longer than these two blocks. And then it's simple to use. You simply are going to open the casing of sash and a dash, and you're going to nest your block right in here like this and run a top stitch along here. And then you're going to do the same to the other side. Just nest it right in here like this and run a top stitch. And you have joined your blocks. And we've got all three joined for the first row using our sash and a dash. So as you recall, block one to two, two to three. At this point, if you want to embellish sash and a dash, you can do so. You can use machine stitches in here. You can use a strip of fabric like we've done here. We've just cut an inch and a quarter, folded the edges under, and you can simply just run this over the top like this and top stitch this in. I thought that looked really nice to kind of pull all the colors together. If you are going to embellish your sash and a dash, now is the time to do it when you're joined block to block. And then our next step is we're going to be joining row to row. We're going to take our second row like this, and we're going to now take a longer piece of our sash and a dash to join these blocks, and that's going to look like this. What you really want to make sure that you do at this point is you want to make sure that your blocks are lined up in this direction and then go ahead and pin your sashing in place as you nest your blocks in there. And again, if you then want to add some more trim, you can go ahead and top stitch this on there. So our blocks are joined. Now two rows are joined. Our last step is binding. Our rows are now joined. It's time to bind. We have two choices for binding. We can either choose a fabric that coordinates with our quilt, and this is just simply straight binding, our typical method, or Fat Quarter Shop also carries matching binding that goes along with our sash and a dash, and you can do that as well. And again, you can leave as is, or you can embellish with machine stitches or with fabric strips. Our mix and match 12 block quilt is done, and it looks fantastic. 
it's really interesting. This looks great on the front, but look, at it looks great on the back too. So this can be as a reversible quilt. And remember, the fun of the mix and match is how you lay out these blocks as is. You can twist them. You can put them in all different orientations. I love the way this quilt turned out. I think it looks really pretty. Here are some other designs using this exact same kit. Here's another example of our mix and match quilt, and you can clearly see all three block designs. This mimics a log cabin and this is a perfect corner block and then of course down here this is the block that we showcased in our demo today and again in this we used color block back backing so you can really have a two-sided quilt here we used white sash and a dash and we did the fabric embellishments and then for our binding we did a traditional binding adding another little piece of the hot pink in here so that it was gave this piping effect to it I think that really set it off quite nicely. Now these fabrics are really brighten up your day. They are so wonderful and pretty and here we set them off with navy blue sash and a dash and we embellish the sash and a dash with a machine stitch. We also used matching binding so this navy blue binding matches the sash and a dash and the fat quarter shop carries that binding as well. We chose to continue on and embellish the binding as well. So you have all those great machine stitches. This is the perfect opportunity to use them. Here's our sunset quilt. Again, we laid these blocks out completely differently, turning them different directions to get a different effect here in the center. And this one, we left the white sashing plain because we thought it really set it off nicely. A couple of other options for sash and a dash. If you don't like the wide casing, you can actually fold it under one more time and you could have narrower casing on one side. Of course, I would do that to both sides, but here's an example of how the wider side looks versus the narrower side. And we also talked about how you can use machine stitches to embellish sash and a dash. You can also use ribbon, rickrack, and again, matching fabric. There are so many options for this kit that you're gonna find the perfect project for whatever it is that you need for your next gift. One more shot of this gorgeous quilt, again, showing all three block designs. This is the one that we worked on during the construction. This is our corner block, and I love this log cabin block. This is a great looking quilt. Again, we can use our sash and a dash, our matching binding, all available at the Fat Quarter Shop. Make sure that you check us out on the YouTube channel as well.